a bronze pharaonic harp set playing uh, on the harp that would be found as you enter uh, the, the entrance of the corner. Bronze statue of Sphinx and golden wall clock decorated with precious stones and a glass decorated with pharaonic crocodile. Also, uh, two replicas of both Karnak and Luxor temples are found at the uh, terrace uh, on the second floor. And um, the, the land on which the corner was built was uh, bought back in 1916 by Italian architect, uh, architect Arsene Giovanni um, in order to build a tea kiosk for the then uh, the uh, Grand Hotel uh, in Helwan uh, in 1932. And it was bought by uh, Mohammed Bek Hafiz and then sold to King Farouk in 1935, who added a large garden. But actually, the break of uh, World War II delayed the construction work. In 1942, the building was completed and was surrounded by a botanical garden uh, containing rare plants. Um, we need to know still more about this very beautiful place, and we're very much delighted to have with us now Mr. Ahmed Hamdi, tour guide. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Ahmed. Good afternoon. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Hamdi, for joining Nile TV International and Nile Cruise. And, and please, um, first of all, uh, in, uh, in brief, uh, tell us the historic significance uh, of the beautiful place uh, we're in now, King Farouk's Corner. Um, th this place was built uh, earlier in the 20th century, and it's uh, one of the residence places of King Farouk, the last king of Egypt. Um, uh, all the people know that. He just proclaimed the throne of Egypt in 1922, and he was quite young. But this uh, residence that was built on 440 meter square, and a place which is much bigger, about 11,000 meters square, including the garden itself, let's go much more plants and trees from all over. Mm. Very similar to the botanical garden in Aswan. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, in this residence, which was built and opened in 1942, as you said, uh, as you mentioned, uh, it was got delayed because of the Second War, and which was finished uh, two years uh, later. But in this residence, we have also, you, you, you mentioned uh, yes. a lot of stuff which is still We've been inside, inside before. Yeah, been yeah. inside many times. But it was open as a museum for the public people recently, and it costs uh, nearly 350,000 US dollars, about 2 million uh, point. And uh, inside, uh, also, there is a very nice and interesting watch, was gifted by the Empress Eugenie for the Khedive of uh, Ismail in the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869, mm. still among the collection in this, in this museum. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite nice and interesting. Uh, it got some Fair. unique artifacts of the family of Muhammad Ali generally and King Farouk himself. Yes, but why did uh, King Farouk choose this particular location? This place is very interesting and quite old in history. Mm. Uh, it dates back to the time of the pharaohs. So we have on the West Bank many uh, rock cut tombs and many chapels was built earlier during the time of the ancient Egyptian uh, history. But during the time of the modern history, most of the leaders choose this part as a, as a settlement to build their houses. So it's known during the time of the Ottomans as a, a place for the elite of the society to build their villas and their houses in this place. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's a really important place, even before the time of King Farouk. And it's very relaxing, quite uh, a way of the traffic jam. So still some of the people until now choose place uh, in Helwan to build their houses and settlements over here. Right. Um, Mr. Hamdi, could you talk to us about the architectural styles used in building this uh, beautiful corner? Uh, well, uh, the European style was uh, much more popular during the time of King Farouk, but um, it still contains some of the Islamic and the Oriental touches inside this building. So we can see some um, motives from the Islamic architecture, like the star pattern decoration, like the floral inter or the interlaced floral scrolls, which was famously known as the Arabesque work. Um, still, as you mentioned, there is some replicas for the temples inside, but this is also another part in the architecture of the building. And uh, we, we can see also some of the European, uh, the Baroque style, 
of architecture in this building, uh, similar to the palaces and the many foundations which was established during the time of the family of Muhammad Ali and King Farouk. Yes. Uh, what are the most uh, special pieces on display uh, inside the corner? Apart from the paintings, I've noticed, for example, some silver um, uh, where um, uh, China with the names of uh, the king uh, and others. So tell me more about uh, that. King Farouk was, um, uh, he was a unique personality. He had been gifted a lot of um, gifts from all over, from the many European leaders and um, um, some of the friends in the region as well have gifted him a lot of swords, medals, uh, watches, and different other stuff. So in many places, not just here, uh, as it dates back to King Farouk himself, we can see some unique pieces that uh, dates back to his time. Uh, besides, there is two uh, paintings on the second floor. One represents Old Cairo, which dates back to the year 1866 by a, f a French painter. And the other one that uh, represents um, uh, Upper Egypt also dates back to the 19th century by an Italian painter as well. Mm -hmm. um, and there are also the bronze uh, statues. In, uh, in the, the bronze um, statues was very unique. In the dining room. In the dining one room. One representing uh, Sudan or uh, South and one representing Egypt. North. That's right. Yes. The North and South. It's the two kingdoms of Upper and Lower Egypt. Yes. That's also another touch in this, this yes. residence. Yes, indeed, uh, Egypt and Sudan. Now, Mr. Hamdi, uh, I've noticed that there is uh, the, uh, there are pieces that um, uh, portray uh, the pharaonic uh, uh, ideologies, uh, uh, also Islamic. Uh, um, 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 uh, 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 there is an Islamic touch inside, uh, and uh, so so talk to us about this mix, uh, and and also the European uh, touch. Uh, uh, um, the, the idea of the torch being held is, comes from the Greek, uh, from the Greek um, history. Mm. So there is a lot of uh, mixture of yeah. great civilizations uh, inside this uh, beautiful corner. Well, Talk to us about this. One of the main things that Farouk want to do in this, um, in this residence, that uh, unfortunately he didn't receive many people in this residence. He just received two guests, I think, mm. as I remember. Uh, but it doesn't last for a long. And uh, he was eager to represent um, a, a, a cosmopolitan architecture in this residence, not just the Islamic or the Coptic part, but also uh, uh, the other parts which represents uh, uh, ancient Egyptian architecture besides uh, the Greek, Roman. And some of that uh, uh, do represent uh, parts of the Greek mythology, for example, as, as you mentioned that uh, uh, the flame, which is, represents uh, uh, a famous deity for the Greeks called Promoseu. And this, this flame, which represents knowledge, it was um, taken over from the gods, according to the Greek mythology, and was given to the human being. And since that's a human being, were so much involved in science and mythology, according to the Greek mythology. Yes. yes. Um, sir, the, the, the corner was inaugurated in 2016, two years ago following a process of uh, renovation. Tell us, how was it like before the restoration? Uh, since 1976, um, the Committee of Preserving the Egyptian Monuments decided to incorporate this uh, residence as a part of the uh, Egyptian heritage. So it became a museum since 1976. But unfortunately, it was totally ignored for a long time. Hmm. more than 40 years of ignorance. But recently, the government decided in 2016 to pay, as I told you, like 350,000 uh, um, uh, US, US which is exceeding 2 million Egyptian pounds for yeah. the whole yeah. renovation of this building and to renovate the Th That was, of course, before the floating of the currency, yes. Exactly, yeah. exactly, which has cost much more now. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Mr. Hamdi, uh, uh, King Farouk obviously did not spend a lot of time in uh, in this house. I'm sure, I'm sure that's uh, that's sad. But, but do you have any explanation for this? Ex explanation explanation for why? Yeah, why he didn't spend so much time in this? Of course, he had other beautiful places to uh, and, and beautiful palaces. But I why is it that he didn't spend much time uh, the, here? The, the main reason is the delaying of the opening of this building. 
Yeah, the outbreak that, of the World uh, War. Yeah, Second it, World it, War. it was planned previously to, to get open this place like 10 years before the, uh, 1942. But unfortunately, the whole circumstance in Egypt and in the whole region, it was very interrupted. And um, the Second War that started earlier, um, some of the European architects were um, involved in the building the different foundations that dates back to the time of King Farouk. And some of them left Egypt for different reasons. So mm. they were here mm. uh, to for real. the work. Yeah. Exactly. So they just left Egypt. And when they get back, that like six, seven years have passed. So they uh, open or they just uh, build this. Um, this residence of King Farouk late, like seven, eight years, and it was open after 10 years. Yes. So it was open, as we said, in 1942, for this is September 1942. Okay. Before King Farouk decided to buy uh, this place, what was the purpose of building uh, this place in the, in the beginning? Why was it built in the beginning? As, as, as I told you, it, it's a very quiet place. It's away from Cairo, located to the south very relaxing and wasn't really busy like today. So King Farouk um, was uh, eager to have um, a place which is quiet. Before King Farouk decided to buy it, what in, what, why was it established in the first place? You mean the establishment of this settlement? Yes. So it, it was established before King Farouk? Yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, King Farouk decided to take this part for himself. Before that, mm. most of the kings of Egypt and right. most of the rulers. Um, uh, Mr. Hamdi um, Hayalad, if yours, we'll be continuing our discussion. Uh, but after we take uh, this uh, short break, uh, please do not go away. Nile Cruz will be back shortly. <laughs> 